In the ever-evolving discourse of wealth and privilege, the concept of old money has increasingly captured public attention. Look at any timeline on your social media app of choice, and you're likely to find a deluge of posts, pictures, and, as is the case here today, videos on how to achieve the old money aesthetic or how to think like old money. Yet despite its prevalent discussion over the past couple of years, many people still grapple with the true essence of old money, mistakenly equating it solely with generational wealth and the number of commas in your bank account. But the truth is the distinction between old money and new money extends far beyond mere financial status, especially when examining the upbringing of children within these affluent families. In today's episode, we'll delve into the heart of what sets old money families apart from new money families who've just made their first millions in the last few years, the subtleties in raising their offspring. And in order to best do this, we'll unravel the five key contrasts in child-rearing practices between families steeped in wealth for generations and those who have just embarked on their journey of affluence. Therefore, join us here and now as we describe the five crucial differences between old money parents and new money parents. First and foremost, let's start with a point about a decision that is made before the baby has even popped out of the womb. What to actually name your child? You see, when it comes to naming conventions, there's an intriguing dichotomy between old money and new money parents and how they make their choice. The old money crowd, steeped in tradition and history, often opt for names that echo the fantastic accomplishments of their ancestors. Take, for instance, Joseph P. Kennedy III, a millennial politician whose name is a tribute not just to his forebear great-grandfather, the father of JFK and RFK, but also to Joseph P. Kennedy Jr., the first-born Kennedy son who was once tipped for the presidency before fate intervened. Similarly, prestigious American families like the Roosevelts and Hearsts are racking up the likes of Roosevelt the Fourths and Hearst the Thirds and Hearst the Fourths these days, each carrying a piece of history in their moniker. Contrastingly, the new money set, often celebrities and tycoons of recent fortune, tend to favor more unique and sometimes downright quirky names for their offspring. Names that scream for attention and are as unconventional as their parents' ascent to wealth. A prime example is Gwyneth Paltrow and Chris Martin, who named their daughter Apple, a choice as distinctive as it is unconventional. Following this trend, Elon Musk, the world's richest man, named his children with even more avant-garde names, such as Xash A12 and Exa Dark Cedarail, each reflecting an otherworldly and brash individuality. Yet there's another side to this coin. Some heirs of old money families burdened by the weight of their illustrious surnames and the public scrutiny that comes with them, choose to step out of the spotlight. They change their names, seeking anonymity, or at least a respite from the constant association with their famed family histories. This is particularly common among the descendants of families who were once royalty in Europe, but after the family lost power generations ago, some of their members immigrate to the United States and keep a low profile by changing their name to something less attention-seeking. It's a move that speaks volumes about the pressures of living up to a name that carries decades, if not centuries, of expectation and legacy. Therefore, this dichotomy between old and new wealth offers a glimpse into how families view heritage and identity. However, once the baby is actually born, old money families and new money families almost immediately grapple with where to actually take the child on vacations and the like, which is what we'll discuss in the next chapter. Now, in the world of the wealthy, there's an intriguing divide between the old money and new money clans around where they vacation and what they actually do with their children once they get there. For example, old money families have always clung to their ancestral homes like a badge of honor. These grand estates, or summer homes, often nestled in the serene countryside of perhaps Scotland or along an iconic coast in a place like New England are much more than just bricks and mortar. They are relics of history, imbued with the spirit of generations past. The Rockefellers, for instance, are a prime example of this breed. Their time-honored family abodes and favored vacation haunts are not just geographical locations. They are symbols of a long-standing heritage. A Rockefeller stepping into these familiar environs is akin to a pilgrimage a journey back through the annals of their storied lineage. 
Indeed, David Rockefeller Jr. has spoken about the importance of family meetings and the role of the family's ancestral homes in maintaining unity and preserving their history. Specifically, Rockefeller Jr. elaborated on the role of the family's homesteads, places that have been passed down over generations, where family members can gather and connect with their past. He said, it's places that were familiar and that were passed down over generations. I can go back to the place where my great-grandfather lived over 100 years ago and see how he lived and see how his son and their grandchildren lived. Then contrast this with new money families and you witness a starkly different tableau. These nouveau riche, having recently ascended the economic ladder, show a penchant for splashing their wealth in the most flamboyant ways imaginable when on vacation or spending time with their loved ones. It's not just about owning the most lavish properties. It's about parading their newfound affluence in the most extravagant locations across the globe. Take young Jaden Smith, for example. A poster child for this modern affluent lifestyle, he spent his formative years in the transient world of movie sets, a far cry from the stability of a family estate. His childhood, a whirlwind of exotic locales and high-profile movie shoots, exemplifies the new money ethos. It's not about roots, it's about wings, the wings to fly to the next big thing and the next opulent adventure. So, this dichotomy between old money and new money is not just a matter of differing real estate portfolios, it reflects a deeper chasm in values and perspectives. Where the old money reveres continuity and tradition, the new money seeks excitement and novelty, with one rooted in the past, the other racing towards the future. And of course, quite naturally, this future first get to the next opportunity mindset extends to the ways in which new money allow their children to use the modern tools of social media to either their benefit or detriment. In a world where the glare of social media can be both a blessing and a curse, the contrast between old money and new money families in their approach to raising children is starkly evident. Old money clans have long cultivated a culture of privacy and restraint, and this ethos is profoundly illustrated in their handling of social media exposure. Take, for instance, the younger Rothschild heirs, a name synonymous with wealth and power. They navigate the digital age with a deliberate aloofness, many of them maintaining a minimal or non-existent social media footprint. It's a conscious choice, a strategic maneuver to preserve the sanctity of their private lives and uphold the dignity of their storied heritage. On the flip side, we have new money families whose relationship with the digital world is markedly different. Here, social media isn't just accepted, it's often embraced as a tool for brand building and self-promotion. This strategy is visibly evident in the manner they encourage or allow their children to engage with these platforms. A prime example is Northwest, daughter of Kim Kardashian and Kanye West, whose presence on TikTok, encouraged by her mother, including collaborations with figures like Ice Spice, has stirred considerable controversy, not least from her father. And this digital exposure is not without its pitfalls, as evidenced by the Carter brothers, Aaron and Nick. Their early thrust into the limelight, partly through the then nascent world of social media and reality TV, is believed to have contributed significantly to Aaron Carter's lifelong struggle with depression. It's a cautionary tale that underscores the potential dangers of prematurely exposing young lives to the unforgiving and relentless scrutiny of the public eye. Thus, we see two paradigms, each reflective of the values and priorities of these familial archetypes. While old money opts for the shield of privacy, new money wields social media as a sword, cutting a path through the digital landscape. The consequences of these choices are as varied as the families themselves, shaping legacies and lives in profound and often unpredictable ways. However, no matter how private or public a family is, getting the child into the right school is always of paramount importance, which we'll discuss in the next chapter. In the upper echelons of society, where lineage and legacy are as crucial as the air we breathe, a fascinating divide emerges in the realm of education as well. On one side, you have the blue-blooded, old-money parents, staunchly adhering to a long-standing tradition of sending their offspring to the same hallowed institutions that have nurtured their forebears. And it's not just about education, it's a rite of passage, a seamless weaving of past and present. A striking illustration of this is the Bush dynasty, where figures such as George W. Bush and Jeb Bush 
tread the time-honored paths of Phillips Academy, Andover, and Yale University. Conversely, the Nouveau Riche, those recent additions to the realm of opulence, often take a divergent route. Eschewing the conventional, these families, buoyed by their fresh fortunes and unshackled by the weight of tradition, lean towards educational settings that resonate more with their ethos of innovation and individuality. They seek institutions that don't just educate, but inspire, fostering creativity and a dare-to-be-different attitude. A prime example is, once again, Elon Musk, an archetype of new wealth and unorthodox thinking, although he grew up in relative wealth back in South Africa. Musk didn't just choose an outside-of-the-box educational alternative for his progeny. He literally created one. Ad Astra, now Astra Nova, is his brainchild, a school that breaks the mold with a curriculum as unique as the man himself. Here, education is not about walking a trodden path, but creating a new one, a reflection of a new money zeal to personalize and pioneer, and to tailor education to fit not just academic needs, but personal aspirations and idiosyncrasies. Thus, whether it's the hallowed halls of traditional powerhouses or the innovative labs of new age institutions, the message is clear. Education is more than learning. It's a declaration of identity and ambition. And once the kiddies are finished with their schooling, the final decision before they reach full independence is, of course, what they plan to do with their life, aka their career. When it comes to career choice for old money families, it's about nurturing a legacy, a saga refined through generations and a blend of honor and history. This often translates into walking a path meticulously laid by ancestors, perhaps leading a family business or excelling in industries that have long been the family's bastion. As an example, we can study the life paths of some of William Randolph Hearst's sons. These heirs either stepped directly into the family's empire or carved out their own niches, bagging Pulitzer Prizes in the process. In the same vein, the Arno family, home to the world's second richest man, Bernard Arno, have given their children the job of holding the reins of the $500 billion luxury fashion LVMH behemoth. A clear demonstration of generational wealth's emphasis on continuity and familial prestige. On the flip side of the coin, we have new money parents, a group defined by their penchant for innovation, risk-taking, and often a breakaway from familial expectations. Here, individual achievement is king. These trailblazers are often found rewriting the rules in sectors like technology, entertainment and sports. A prime example is Travis Knight, son of Nike co-founder Phil Knight. Rather than follow in the footsteps of his father, who revolutionized the sports and footwear industry, Travis charted his own course in the realm of animation and film. His most celebrated work, Kubo and the Two Strings, stands as an icon of his individual prowess and distinct departure from the family's traditional career focus. Therefore, while old money clings to the tried and tested career decisions, new money dares to venture into uncharted territories, thus reshaping our understanding of success and legacy in the modern era. And now, we'd like to see you in the comments. Have you met an old money or new money families who you can recognize as having followed these principles? We love hearing your personal experiences and stories, so please do share them with us below. Thanks again for watching and cheers until next time.